And now, the secrets behind the casting and production of It's a Wonderful Life. Casting! Capra noted in his memoirs the character of a good Sam, who doesn't realize he's a good Sam, in my opinion is the most difficult of all the actor's jobs. James Stewart was the only one I knew who could play it. I called Jimmy's MCA representative, Lou Wasserman, and told him I wanted him to tell the tale. Stewart, according to Wasserman, would gladly play the character even if he didn't know the narrative. Mr. Smith goes to Washington and you can't take it with you for Stewart and Capra's prior collaborations. Stewart's best buddy, Henry Fonda, was considered. Could you imagine Henry Fonda in the role? I feel like I could imagine that. Both actors had no job prospects after returning from the war. Fonda, on the other hand, starred in John Ford's My Darling Clementine, 1946, which was shot at the same time as It's a Wonderful Life. Capra examined approximately 178 established performers for the film's 17 supporting roles. Whoosh! The character of Mary was initially given to Gene Arthur, Stewart's co-star in You Can't Take It With You, and Mr. Smith goes to Washington. But she'd recently pulled out of a Broadway production born yesterday due to tiredness. Before borrowing Donna Reed from MGM, Capra considered Olivia de Havilland. Can you imagine that? I think I could. Martha Scott, Anne Dvorak, and Ginger Rogers. Rogers declined because she thought it was very boring. Foolish, you say? She asked her readers in chapter 26 of her autobiography, Ginger, My Story, in which she questioned her decision. I don't think I could see Ginger Rogers, so I think that she made a good choice. Thomas Mitchell and Vincent Price were among the performers considered for the role of Potter. Oh my goodness. Vincent Price? That would have been one I would have wanted to watch. Originally titled Herbert Potter, by the way. The ultimate winner, Lionel Barrymore, was a well-known Ebenezer Scrooge in radio dramatizations of A Christmas Carol at the time. Have you heard him in that? And was an obvious option for the part. Capra and Stewart had previously collaborated on Capra's 1938 Best Picture Oscar winner, You Can't Take It With You. Mr. Gower, the pharmacy proprietor, was played by H.B. Warner, who studied medicine before turning to acting. Perfect. He also appeared in Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, Lost Horizon, You Can't Take It With You, and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, all of which were also directed by Frank Capra. He had played Jesus Christ in Cecil B. DeMille's The King of Kings during the silent period. Have you ever seen those? In 1927. Capra's employer, Columbia Pictures, which had been situated on Gower Street for many years, gave the street its name. A pharmacy on Gower Street was also a favorite of the studio staff. The movie is based on Philip Van Doren Stern's self-published short tale and booklet, The Greatest Gift, which is partially based on Charles Dickens' 1843 novella, A Christmas Carol. Did you realize that? In an early draft of the script, the scene in which little George saves his brother, Harry, from drowning was altered. As Potter looks on, the boys play ice hockey on the river, which is in Potter's land. George shoots the puck, but it misses the target and lands in Potter's yard, breaking the no trespassing sign. Uh-oh. Potter grows enraged, and his gardener unleashes attack dogs, scattering the youngsters. Harry slips on the ice and George saves him, but the outcome is the same. Bobby Anderson claims that during the altercation between Mr. Gower and little George, H.P. Warner hit him in the face and caused his ear to bleed, causing him to cry. After the sequence was shot, though, Warner hugged him. What do you think of that? I don't think I could ever see the film the same way again. A smash is heard off screen in the scene where Uncle Billy gets drunk during Harry and Ruth's welcome home newlywed celebration and staggers out. Mitchell in the role of Uncle Billy shouts, I'm all right, I'm all right. 
hinting that Uncle Billy had collided with a couple of garbage cans. Capra left Mitchell's unplanned ad lib and gave the technician $10, equivalent to $141.84 in this year, for his sound improvement after a technician had accidentally knocked over the equipment. I'm so glad that you joined me for learning the secrets of the casting and the, some of the production secrets behind It's a Wonderful Life. I hope it makes you rewatch the film with those thoughts in mind. As always, this is SD and I thank you for tuning in.